Well, before we begin, I just want to uh, just say a word of uh, thanks to all of you. Um, August is coming to an end pretty soon, and uh, we, our ministry year begins in September and ends in August. So, and it will, it's going to be close to uh, a year since uh, Diane and I joined this community. So we really want to thank you for welcoming us, uh, embracing us, and just, uh, yeah, welcoming us in. This is our fourth church, but um, this past year has been the best year of ministry for us. It's been 10 years, 11 years now, but this has been our best year. It's our fourth church. Church. Three other churches, people were good. We enjoyed being there. They loved us as well. But one thing Diane and I really sensed that's different about our community is that there's great potential in our community. And that gets us excited. We, Diane and I, would often talk about just, you know, isn't it exciting thinking about where Oikos is going to go? And, and it's really, it's God's giving us that sense of um, positive attitude and just excitement about our community so we really want to thank you and then the also reason i talk about this is because we want to try to bring this ministry year to an end this week and next week and start looking forward uh, to next ministry year so today's sermon and next week's sermon we're gonna it's gonna be a little bit of wrapping up this past year but also looking ahead into september as to what we want to do in september so I want to just ask um, Daniel to just show a couple of pictures when we begin. This is the first picture that I want to show you, a tree that's dying in scorching heat in the desert. And if you go, could go to the next picture, there, uh, there's the other picture. And the reason I show this, uh, these two pictures is because I want you to think about, if you had to describe your spiritual life right now, which picture would describe you? Would it be this one or would it be the one before? Well, don't tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> but I really hope it's the second picture that describes where you are in your spiritual walk with the Lord. Just full of life and greenery and, and joy and happiness. Well, you know, when in life, there are things that we know we should do, but we don't do, right? So the big one is exercise. We know we all need to exercise, but unless you're Jason, you don't exercise as often as he does, right? Or eating healthy and eating balanced diet. We all know we should do, but we don't do it. Well, the big one for me that I know I should always do, but I don't always, often, for, I often forget to do is flossing. <laughs> I know I need to floss. But I always, I, and when the night comes, I'm like, oh, okay, why? It's so tiring. I'll just go to bed. And I don't floss. And every time I go to the dentist or hygienist, I, I feel guilty. So a couple days before, I go crazy. I'm like, you know, like, <laughs> try to get everything out. But I think they know. Because every time they go, they're like, oh, so you haven't been flossing lately. I'm like, no. And I start giving excuses as to why I'm busy, I'm in school, I'm ministry. And they're like, yeah, whatever. You know? But, so yeah, it's one of those things that we know we should do, but we don't do. There are things like that in Christian life too, right? And we know the big two ones, two big ones that we know. Of course, first one is prayer. We all know we should pray, but we don't pray enough. And we talked about this in this series of living life of a prosperity that God offers us. Well, without prayer, there is no prosperity in our lives, spiritual life. Well, the second big one, of course, is reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. And that's what we want to talk about today. And today's sermon is one of those sermons that everything you're about to hear, you know already. So I'm... I was kind of hesitant because, well, everything I'm going to say is there's nothing new. We all know this. But it's one of those things that we need a reminder for. And that's what we're going to do. And today's sermon is very simple. The point of the sermon is simple. You must love the Word of God and live in the Word of God if you want to have any chance of living, living the abundant life that God offers us. Without reading the Word of God, there's no chance of us living that abundant life that God offers us. Well, again, the fact of the matter is we all know this. We all know that. But we don't always do a good job of this. You know it, I know it, and we all know it. Well, when I say this, I don't come with, uh, I don't say this with the heart of judgment, but really I say this with the heart of sadness more. Uh, because years of being in church be, and now being a pastor for about 11 years, I noticed and I realized one thing. The majority of the people in church do not read their Bible. The majority of the church in, people in church 
do not read their Bible. And what breaks my heart more as a pastor, and when I see that, is that many of us actually don't even know the seriousness of us not reading the Bible. What is more, it's one thing for a church goer to not read the Bible, but it's quite another for leaders and, and Sunday school teachers and pastors to not read the Bible. But the fact is, many of us, Sunday school teachers, youth group teachers, pastors and leader, leaders, we don't read our Bibles. So why don't Christians read their Bibles? Well, the big reason people give is, of course, I don't have the time. But of course, we all know, once again, that's not a good excuse because we have enough time to go out, play hockey, hang out with our friends, go watch movies. So it's not really true that we don't have enough time to read the Bible. There are other better reasons why people say they don't read the Bible. Things like, I don't understand. When I read it, it's hard for me to understand. It's a book that was written many years ago, and I have a hard time understanding what the book is saying. That's better reason, and I understand your struggle. I feel for you because I know that reading the Bible regularly is not easy. But again, at the same time, I am come with this reminder that you all know already that it's not okay for us to not read our Bible because only way to life that God promises us is through the Word, through the Word. When we go to Psalm 1, we hear from a person who was convinced by this truth, that the Word of God changes our lives. And in Psalm 1, the psalmist says this, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on His law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. So this psalm is talking about a blessed person. When you think of a blessed person, what comes to your mind? Is it a person with health? person with loss of money? Loss of education? prestige in life? Well, the psalmist in Psalm 1 says the blessed person is the one who lives in the Word of God. So it says, blessed is the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on His law day and night. And the psalm goes talk about why the person who reads the Bible is blessed. It says that the person who reads the Bible, meditates on it day and night, delights in the law of the Lord, is blessed because, first of all, person who lives in the Word is able to overcome sin in our lives. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. And it says, how is this possible? Well, you don't do this by beating your flesh to death. Don't sin, don't sin, don't sin. You know, like the whip on your wig or, or I'm not going to sin, I'm not going to sin, I'm not going to sin. You don't sin by, not sin by doing that. You don't, you overcome sin by delighting in the Word of God and meditating on it day and night. You know, we live in a very peaceful world society, but we don't realize that we're in a battle. We, we, Physically, we may live in a good place, but spiritually, we live in a desert and dry land. For those people who, who are more spiritually aware and sensitive, they t say to us that Vancouver is actually one of the most driest spiritual places that they know. When they come to this land and pray, they feel a sense of oppression on this land. Yes, we have beautiful trees, mountains, and all these things, but when these people pray, they feel heavy because there's a strong sense of spiritual oppression on this land. So how do we overcome? How do we overcome? How do we win this battle? Is more Christian conference the answer? Is more activities in church the answer to keep us busy? No. The answer is, to, is the Word of God. So Ephesians 6, it says to us, Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against their authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And then it goes to talk about the armor of God. And it talks about the word of God as being the sword. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, 
which is the word of God. That's the only offense that we have against our enemy, the word of God. 